Okay. So let us start. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so one more numerical is there. Okay, uh, the uh, last one we did uh, was your rectangular. Okay, rectangular sedimentation tank we have done, and this one is your circular settling tank. Okay, or circular sedimentation tank. So here the question is like design a circular settling tank unit for a primary treatment of sewage at twenty millimeters per day. Okay, so the <clears throat> How much is the uh, this one uh, quantity? It is your twenty uh, sorry twelve million meters per day. So uh, also given as uh, that assume suitable values of retention period, <clears throat> okay, and uh, surface loading. So here it is mentioned that you have to assume that the detention period and surface loading. So it's uh, already uh, given in the notes that you have to assume a detention period of two hour and the surface loading as 40 million liters per square meter per day. Okay. <clears throat> so after assuming the detention period and your surface loading, we can now find out the quantity of the sewage. Okay, the, that is to be treated for that detention period or of two hours. <clears throat> so how to find out you have to multiply the uh, quantity amount of uh, sewage okay into your detention period so <clears throat> um, that gives your okay after solving you see after solving it will give you 1000 meter cube okay so now you got the uh, uh, capacity of the tank as your 1000 uh, cubic meter okay so now there is one formula for surface loading okay so this is your formula you see surface loading is equal to q <coughs> divided by surface area of the tank okay the so surface loading is how much uh, we have assumed to be forty thousand. how much is q q is your 12 million liters so it is 12 into 10 to the power 6 and what is the surface area of a tank it is your 5 by 4 d square Okay, <clears throat> so pi by 4 d square when you put it, you don't know the diameter. Okay, you don't know the diameter. So you can easily find out the <clears throat> diameter. Okay, so uh, uh, by using the formula here you have found out the diameter of the tank. Now, effective depth how we you uh, find out? So effective depth is your, again formula is same, capacity by area of the cross section. So it is your 1000, <coughs> capacity is how much we got? We got 1000, isn't it? So 1000 divided by, 1000 divided by, again area is how much? Pi by 4, since it's a circular tank, okay? So we, it, what is the area of the circular tank? It is pi by 4 d squared. So pi by 4 d squared is how much? Just now we got it to be? 19.6 okay so it is 19.6 whole square so you got it to be 3.2 so now you use the settling tank with 19.6 meter dia okay this dia you got and 3.2 meter <coughs> your effective depth okay or water depth you can say uh, or you can provide a extra 0.3 meter also by adding it up okay 3.2 plus 0.3 also you can uh, add it up and whatever value you get you can say it as your overall depth okay so this is your uh, very simple one uh, circular settling tank uh, numerical okay <clears throat> so next Okay, so next is your secondary treatment through biological filtration of sewage. Okay, so this is your uh, like it is in, it is an introduction to your sewage filtration. Okay, so here everything uh, whatever it is done it is through your biological filtration. 
okay so that is uh, let us read it out once see the effluent from the primary sedimentation tank so before uh, before this we were studying about primary sedimentation tank so the effluent whatever is coming from the primary sedimentation tank it is it contains about what 60 to 80 percent of the organic matter okay uh, it contains about 60 to 80 percent of the organic matter so that uh, that colloidal organic matter okay which passes through your uh, primary clarifiers okay i will show you what is the primary clarifier okay so <clears throat> without settling there it has to be you know like removed for your further treatment okay so this uh, like your further treatment it has to be like it is removed as your secondary or biological treatment okay so uh, like uh, here the character of the organic matter okay it may be changed by different methods okay which are uh, broadly it is classified already as your filtration and as your activated sludge process so activated sludge process we will be uh, dealing later okay so now we will be only studying about the filtration process okay <coughs> so here uh, you see here this uh, all the secondary treatment processes that is filters as well as your activated sludge process are designed to work on aerobic bacterial decomposition this is an important line so here the activated sludge process and also the filtration uh, filters you can say so they are designed to work on what aerobic they are designed to work on aerobic bacterial decomposition okay so here bacteria bacteria it is an important thing Okay, <clears throat> so here, okay, so here, this is because of the fact that the aerobic decomposition, it does not produce bad smell, okay, uh, this aerobic decomposition, because only an aerobic decomposition, they produces bad smells in foul gases, okay, so this aerobic decomposition, it doesn't produce any bad smells in gases, so, uh, and uh, as are produced by anaerobic decomposition and also <clears throat> because aerobic bacteria they are more active than your anaerobic bacteria and everyone is interested in only the active ones okay isn't it so that's why your here only the aerobic bacteria are used okay so also here you see the rate of doing work by aerobic bacteria it is three times of that of your anaerobic type okay so at 30 degrees celsius so you can just uh, assume how much of aerobic bacteria is uh, active okay so it is like three times of that of your anaerobic bacteria that is at 30 degrees celsius okay <clears throat> so next okay so the filter units okay the filter units for secondary treatment it consists of what it consists of open beds okay it consists of open beds of what coarse aggregates okay over which the sewage is sprinkled intermittently so you know there are uh, like uh, many many coarse aggregates you can see there are many coarse aggregates there and above those coarse aggregates what is done your sewage it is sprinkled there okay the sewage is sprinkled in your uh, sorry over your coarse aggregates <clears throat> so the necessary contact surface your for the growth of aerobic bacteria is provided by the aggregates in the bed so here the contact surface, okay, the contact surface for the growth of the aerobic bacteria, it is provided by what? It is provided by the aggregates in the bed and the aeration is provided by the nature, okay. So, the effluent uh, that is coming from the filter units, it is uh, settled out in the secondary clarifiers, okay. And on the other hand, this is about your filter units, okay. Filter units, what is there? Coarse aggregates are there and above that your... <coughs> this uh, sewage water it is being sprinkled there okay and this uh, uh, you know uh, the growth of uh, this aerobic bacteria they are provided by the aggregates in the bed okay those, those are in contact with your aggregates 
So on the other hand, what happens in activated sludge treatment unit is that it consists of aeration of uh, tanks of long detention periods. Here, <coughs> the detention period is much longer than your filter units. Okay, in which the activated sludge is mixed with the sedimented sewage. Okay, what is a sedimented sewage? That is uh, the effluent that we are getting from the primary carifiers. Okay, so here the sludge does the inner activated sludge treatment unit, the sludge solids. Okay, they are kept in suspension. They are kept in suspension and will provide the necessary contact surfaces for the growth of aerobic bacteria. So here, the main difference is that the filter units, the fi in the filter units, the aerobic bacteria, they are attached to the bed surface or, and what is the bed surface in filter units? It is your coarse aggregates, okay? The aerobic bacteria or the growth of aerobic bacteria is attached in your filter units, whereas in your activated sludge treatment unit, the growth of bacteria, it is not attached, okay? It is in the form of suspension, okay? The sludge, the sludge solids, these are kept in suspension. And in that suspension itself, uh, your, um, that growth of bacteria or aerobic bacteria will grow, okay? So, <clears throat> There are, you know, like uh, different uh, kinds of filters that are commonly used or uh, in your secondary treatment of sewage. Okay, so those are the different types of filters that are being used uh, in your secondary treatment processes. Those are your number one. <clears throat> you see your contact beds. Okay, contact beds used at very small plants and have become almost obsolete nowadays. Okay, number two is your intermittent sand filters. These are also used at smaller plants. Number three is your trickling filters, most commonly used in your modern days. And number four is your miscellaneous type of filters used under special circumstances in particular projects. Okay, so now these four are your different types of filters that are being used in your sewage treatment. So in <coughs> your, uh, like these four are the different uh, types, but we will be uh, studying only about one type. Okay, we will not be dealing with the uh, contact beds and intermittent cell filters. These are like, you know, these are like used for your small plants and also uh, the contact beds have become obsolete nowadays. So we will be dealing with the one which is used in the modern days. That is your trickling filters. Okay, but if you want, you can go through uh, the notes. Okay, you can go through this uh, contact beds and all, what are all these you can study or you can just uh, <clears throat> read it once so that you can have an idea about contact beds in your uh, sand filters. Okay, so now moving to your trickling filters for biological filtration of sewage. So, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. Okay, so the conventional trickling filters and their improved forms known as high rate trickling filters are now almost universally adopted for giving secondary treatment <coughs> to sewage. Okay, so these filters also called as percolating filters or sprinkling filters consist of tanks of coarser filter media over which the sewage is allowed to sprinkle or trickle down by means of spray nozzles or rotary distributors. So, <coughs> this one is a you know it have a uh, like uh, it has some spray nozzles <clears throat> it has some spray nozzles by which the sewage it comes out and it trickles over the uh, you know the bed and below the bed uh, below the uh, uh, bed it is your pore segregates is there okay so the water it is uh, the sorry not the water the sewage water it allows to trickle down so that's why its name is your trickling filter okay so now if i uh, explain it like this i think you will not understand or you will not have an idea of what is a trickling filter okay 
So uh, just I have told you that this trickling filter is it is you know, it is an improvised form of your um, like high weight trickling filters, and these are already <clears throat> nowadays it is being adopted for your secondary treatment of sewage. Okay, and uh, now you see one video. Okay. You see one video of a trickling filter, I think you will be getting an idea of what it is. Okay. <coughs> okay. <coughs> I will be sharing one video. <clears throat> you watch the video, okay? I'm playing it with. Now that the wastewater has been pumped to the trickling filters, the mechanical and physical process of primary treatment are concluded. The next step is biological treatment, which is known as the secondary treatment process. The wastewater that is pumped from the primary effluent wet well to the top of the two trickling filters is spread evenly across the surface of the filters through revolving pipes known as distribution arms. These arms have holes known as ports. Okay, can you hear the video? <clears throat> okay, so just now I was to, uh, telling you about the uh, this uh, no nozzles, isn't it? So you see <clears throat> here this part of uh, the sewage water is coming out, isn't it? You can see the holes. So those are your nozzles, okay? The water, it comes out through this central pipe, this one, okay, and it gets distributed to this rotary arms. These are called rotary arms, okay, since it keeps on rotating, okay. <clears throat> These are uh, filtering media, you can say. The water, the sewage water, it trickles over this surface, okay, and below this surface, what is there, there is pore aggregate, okay. Now you see again in the video. The trickling filters are 86 feet in diameter and about 46 feet tall. You can see these structures as you drive along Route 1 between Cook's Corner and Main Street. The biological treatment process happens when microbes consume organic matter and wastewater and convert it to carbon dioxide, water and energy for their own growth and reproduction. The microbes grow on a plastic cross-flow type media which looks like a honeycomb. The media in each filter is 22 feet deep. The cross-flow design enables more biological treatment to be accomplished in a smaller space because of the increased surface area. The surface area in each filter is 3,830,000 square feet, the equivalent of 80 football fields. More area means more room for microbes to grow. The slimy growth on the trickling filter media is called a zuglial mass. It is where the microbes, such as nematodes, stalked ciliates, and rotifers live and break down the organic chemical bonds in the waste. When the biological treatment in the trickling filters is complete, the microbes have eaten their fill. They are fat, dumb, and happy. The microbes will die from lack of oxygen. They fall off of the trickling filter media and exit the bottom of the filter as a solid called humus, also known as secondary sludge. Okay, so I think you have uh, seen the video and you have understood a bit, I think, isn't it? <clears throat> Let me see one more video. Wait. Now that the wastewater has been pumped to the trick.
Trickling filters are biological reactors within wastewater treatment plants, which are used to remove organic matter and or ammonia from wastewater. Compared to the activated sludge process, the microorganisms are not suspended in the mixed liquor, but they are attached to a fixed bed surface. Nowadays, the fixed bed surface is usually provided by structured plastic fill media, but in the past, rock, gravel and hardwood was also used. Wastewater from primary clarifiers is continuously trickled over the first layer of plastic fill media using a rotary distributor. While wastewater is traveling down to the bottom of the trickling filter, a cross-corrugated pattern within the plastic fill media ensures a good water-air mixing. Trickling filters are operating under aerobic conditions, but mostly without the use of forced ventilation or aeration. Instead, the tower shape of trickling filters causes that air is sucked inside the tower over slots at the trickling filter bottom. This effect is also called chimney effect and results from air buoyancy which occurs due to a difference in indoor to outdoor air density, resulting from temperature and moisture differences. For the design of trickling filters, three components are very important. The support structure, plastic fill media layers and the rotary distributor. The support structure has to withstand high vertical loadings of up to 50 kilograms per cubic meter, three pounds per cubic feet of plastic fill media, plus up to 250 kilograms per cubic meter, 15 pounds per cubic foot for attached sludge and water inside the fill media packs. At the same time, the supporting structure must leave enough space for sludge collection and removal and to avoid blockage of plastic fill media channels. Therefore, the support structure typically consists of PVC stanchions, FRP grating and slope corrector plates to adjust for bottom slopes. The plastic fill media layers must provide enough surface area for attached growth of microorganisms ensure a good water and air mixing, as well as withstand structural loadings. Typical removal rates for trickling filters are between 5 and 20 grams BOD per square meter plastic fill media surface area per day and 1 to 2 grams ammonia per square meter per day. Plastic fill media is available in different types with various specific surface areas. As higher the surface area, as more microorganisms are available and as better is the performance of the trickling filter, but at the same time as higher is the risk of clogging. During the lifetime of a trickling filter, the plastic film media will be exposed to many different outer impacts, such as water, UV radiation, changing load requirements, foot traffic and cleaning procedures. In the beginning, these effects will be barely noticeable but over time, especially the bottom and top layer of plastic fill media start to deteriorate. With increasing damages, the air and water distribution within the trickling filter gets worse and worse, so that the performance of the trickling filter starts to decrease. When the bottom layer compresses and the top layer shows cracks and broken channels, it's time to exchange the plastic fill media. To maximize the lifetime of plastic fill media, the layer distribution must be properly designed. The material thickness of plastic fill media foils can be varied depending on the structural loading requirements. Therefore, for a long time, 30 years, the bottom layer should be reinforced, followed by average to low material thickness fill media layers and finished with a high material thickness reinforced top layer. Finally, the purpose of a rotary distributor is, of course, a good water distribution, so it's also used for plastic fill media flushing. For an even spray pattern, a certain distance between top of plastic fill media and rotary arms must be determined. As the spray area enlarges with increasing distance from the central shaft, more spray nozzles have to be placed at the end of the rotary arms, compared to the beginning of the rotary arms. Finally, the amount of water trickled above a certain plastic fill media area per minute influences the flushing effect, also known as Spulecraft, or SK value. As higher the SK value, as thinner is the layer of microorganisms attached to the plastic fill media surface. The goal is to maintain enough microorganisms for BOD and ammonia removal, but to prevent excessive microorganism growth and clogging of fill media channels. 
Thanks for watching. And if you like our three minute tutorials, please subscribe and don't forget to give a thumbs up. <clears throat> so you have watched. Okay. So I think you have uh, got a little bit of idea. Okay, how does a trickling filter it looks like, or how does it work? Yes. So. <clears throat> okay, so you first, uh, you have seen the everything, okay, how does it work, uh, from where the uh, waste water is coming, uh, how the water is being trickled down, okay, so everything you have seen, what are the materials there, okay, so uh, like you should know uh, here, uh, basically in this semester, you should know uh, or you, have, you should have an idea about how does the trickling filter, it works, okay, so this construction of details, Okay, so this is now, it is a typical section just now you, should, uh, you saw in the video, okay. So it looks like this if you draw. <clears throat> so uh, this constructional and operational of uh, trickling filters you go through by yourself, okay. So this, uh, how does it work, everything is written here, you go through, <clears throat> go through this. Okay, this is a diagram you see, just now you have seen. Okay, so now the types of trickling filters, okay, what are the types of trickling filters? There are uh, two, okay, you can say two types, one is a conventional trickling filters and the other one is your high rate filters, okay, or you can say high rate uh, trickling filters. So, uh, let us see what is uh, conventional and what is a high rate trickling filter. So, <clears throat> The high rate uh, filters or, or it has some modern advancements, okay, it has some modern advancements and also it uh, functions on the same lines and uh, these are having some uh, or same constructional details, okay, so both your conventional and high rate trickling filters, it has the same constructional details, uh, but the difference is that the provision is made in them for recirculation of sewage, okay, so what is the difference? Uh, the, but with the difference that provision is made in dam for recirculation of sewage to the filter by uh, pumping a part of the filter affluent to the primary settling tank and repassing through it and the filter. Okay, so the high rate filters it uh, make it it's somehow it is possible to pass the sewage at greater loadings. Okay, and uh, like uh, lesser space and lesser filter media. Okay, now. Um, there are certain merits and demerits of the trickling filters, okay. So like uh, advantages are many, okay, like the rate of the filter loading it is very high, okay, and the effluent uh, obtained from the trickling filters it is sufficiently nitrified and stabilized, okay, and it removes about how much 75% of BOD and also about 80% of uh, suspended solids, okay. So, <clears throat> number three is your like working of uh, trickling filter, it is simple and does not, it requires a skilled supervision, okay. Now, uh, again, they are flexible in operation and they can be therefore uh, withstand what the application of variety of sewages having different concentrations so since they are you know flexible in operation so any kind of sewages those are having different uh, concentrations and compositions they can be uh, applied okay and they are self cleaning okay then moisture content of the sludge obtained from trickling filters it is also as high as your 99% okay 
and uh, okay lekin there are some disadvantages also like the head loss through this filters it is high okay making automatic closing of the filters necessary the cost of construction of prickling filters is also very high and these filters it cannot treat raw sewage okay and primary sedimentation is a must so it cannot treat the raw sewage you cannot provide the directly the raw sewage to this trickling filter these this trickling filters it can only take the sewage that comes from your primary sedimentation okay <clears throat> So again, there are many operational troubles also. Okay, you did all uh, this, all this. This is your fly nuisance. Okay, like uh, other nuisance is there, ponding trouble is there. Okay, these are simple, these are simple things. Okay, then <clears throat> next class. By next class, we will be designing one uh, trickling filter. Okay, we will be designing one trickling filter in the next class. It's a bit long, so I won't start it today. Okay, and there is one more uh, like difference between your conventional and high rate trickling filter. This one also you go through. Okay, like five six points you study. Okay, the easy easy ones you take it out and you can uh, write it down in your copy. The difference between your conventional and high rate trickling filter. Okay, so after your trickling filter, we will be going to your secondary sedimentation. Okay, or not secondary sedimentation, or we will be going uh, uh, going through your activated sludge process. So we have uh, like uh, studied about the attached one. Attached aerobic uh, culture we have studied. Now we will be studying about in the next class about your, uh, you know, suspended one. Okay, that is your activated sludge process. <clears throat> so this numerical we will be solving in the next class. Okay. Okay. Let me take your attendance. Number one, number one, Sapa is present. Okay, Sapa is present. Okay, number two, number two. Okay, number two present. Number three. Yeah, one. Arbisha is present. Yeah, row number one. Oh yes, I have given you present. One, two, I have given present. Row number three is also present. I guess Arbisha. Okay. Row number four. Present, ma'am. Okay, five. Five, six, seven. Yes, ma'am. Okay, eight. Nine. Present, ma'am. Nine is present. Okay. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Yes, ma'am. Eleven. <coughs> okay. Twelve. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thirteen. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Yes, ma'am. Nineteen. Yes, ma'am. Nineteen. Okay. Eighteen is present. Okay, eighteen present. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Eighteen. Okay, nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah, nineteen given. Twenty. Ma'am. Okay, twenty present. Twenty one. Ma'am. Okay, twenty one present. Twenty two. Yes, ma'am. Okay, twenty three. Yes, ma'am. Okay, twenty four. Yes, ma'am. Okay, twenty five. Present, ma'am. Okay, twenty six. Present, ma'am. Okay, twenty seven. Twenty eight. Yes, ma'am. Okay, twenty nine. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thirty. Present, ma'am. Okay, thirty one. Thirty two. Thirty three. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thirty four. Thirty five. 
36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. Present, ma'am. Ma'am, 40 present. Okay. 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 40. Okay, is that 47? 46 yes, will be present, okay. Yes, <coughs> 48, 49, 50. Okay, let me read, read it out the uh, sweet. Okay, let me read it out the absent ones, okay? You just listen if your own number is there. Rule number 5. 6, 8, 10, 14, 15, 16, 17, 27, 31, 32, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 42, 43, 44, 45, 48, 49, 50. Is anybody's roll number here? 45 ma'am present. Okay, 45 present. Okay. Uh, others are all I have given present. So number 8 is present. Uh, okay, number 8 I have given. Just now I have given. Anyone else? <coughs> Nobody, right? Okay. Okay, we will uh, meet, you, meet you in the next class. Okay? <coughs> On Wednesday we will meet. <clears throat> Thank you.